G'day YouTube, 1MJ here. Well, some pretty big Australian news uh, in sort of not so much cryptocurrency, but blockchain technology anyway. So we'll start with this one. So Scott Morrison and the government have put $5 million uh, into digital business plan. And this includes $5 million uh, for blockchain specifically. Now the actual amount they're putting into uh, DLT, so digital ledger technology uh, is a lot bigger but they've put $5 million towards two different projects. So as we see down here, the Australian government this week unveiled its $574 million digital business plan that includes seven-figure grants for distrib distributed ledger technology, technology excuse me, initiatives. So uh, Prime Minister Scott Morrison, ahead of next week's federal government budget, the plan outlines $4.95 million in support support for two blockchain pilots directed at reducing business compliance costs. The plan supports Australia's economic recovery by removing outdated regulatory barriers, boosting the capability of small businesses and backs the uptake of uh, technology across the economy. Piper Alderman partner Michael Bacina told Cointelegraph that these two projects are important to help demonstrate and unlock the value of blockchain. With blockchain adoption uh, accelerating around the world, this funding is very welcome boost to the Australian blockchain industry and our local expertise. As part of the plan, $480 million has been designated for various technological initiatives that could intersect distributed ledger technologies, including $183 million towards a new digital ident identity system and $301 million for developing a single business register, allowing businesses to quickly view, update and maintain their business uh, data in one location. So that's some big money being put forward by the Australian government uh, towards you know digital ledger technology, not cryptocurrency specific, but still digital ledger technology, which cryptocurrencies are all based around. Uh, and well done on the Australian government. I was really worried that they were going to fall behind uh, this whole kind of, you know, move. It'd be nice for Australia to, you know, go out and buy some Bitcoin. I think that would be really smart. The government just, you know, put however many million, whatever it is, you know, into some Bitcoin and just simply hold on to it. Because uh, our dollar's going down exactly like every other country's dollar. We need some sort of hard assets and things like that. Uh, and my personal opinion is Australia. It'd be good if we were one of, the, one of the first governments in the world to get on board and just buy up some Bitcoin, you know, 1%, whatever that is, uh, would be a good idea. You know, a lot of people are saying these days it's good to have 1% to 2% of your you know wealth tied up in you know bitcoin then australian government should seriously consider doing something like that but look i'm not a financial advisor so i doubt they're going to listen to me uh, and i'm not providing financial advice it just makes sense to me uh to get involved in this it looks like it's the way of the future and you know that's my personal opinion but something i found really interesting down here was throughout 2020, the government has shown a growing interest in distributed ledger technology and blockchain applications. In September, the Select Committee on Financial Technology, FinTech and Regulatory Technology, RegTech, published an interim report with over 50 blockchain, blockchain citations. Submissions to the committee reported that blockchain's potential is estimated at $175 billion annually within five years and $3 trillion by 2030. That's 10 years away. If this is true, and of course it's just, you know, someone's estimate, and look, that means it could be a whole lot more and also could be uh, less as well, but I would say that's a fairly conservative one. That's big time money. I would love for Australia to really get on the front foot and be a leader. We're not a leader in too many things. It's not to say we're not a leader in any. We are a leader in some areas, but, you know, blockchain just feels really, really big. And I would love for Australia to be on the front foot and kind of leading the way. And it's good to know that these are the figures that, you know, I guess, you know, on a conservative estimate are coming up. $3 trillion uh, by 2030. That's only sort of, you know, it's less than 10 years now. Now we're going on sort of nine years. Jeez, come on, uh, Scott Morrison in Australia. Let's get on board and be, you know, some front runners in distributed le uh, ledger technology, blockchain and all the rest of it. 
I know Powerledger received a grant from the Australian government uh, a number of years ago, and I think it was like a million bucks or something to help them get going. And, you know, Powerledger's not doing uh, a whole lot uh, in the news at the moment. They're still operating and they're, they're working, but there hasn't been any sort of major things that's come out from them. But, you know, uh, Dr. Gemma Green, I'm sure she's working hard on it. Uh, and so, again, that's good that Australia's on the for- forefront of that. But another interesting story I found. So uh, ASIC, the Australian Securities Exchange, uh, is to triple the capacity of uh, distributed ledger technology system. So currently we work uh, off the chess system uh, here in Australia uh, when you're buying uh, stocks and shares and sort of things like that. And basically what that is, uh, it's a clearinghouse uh, which is a sub-register system. Uh, it's a computer system that's operated by the Australian Stock Exchange uh, and they use it to transfer security ownership from sellers to buyers, but it also uh, transfers the money as well. And so basically they had to delay the blockchain system that they were going to bring out because uh, they've just been overrun uh, at the moment and they obviously think it's not going to be big enough. So it was supposed to be launched in early 2022, uh, and I guess it's going to be pushed back now because, as it says here, they're going to make a triple the capacity of what, what it currently is. And so, again, I think this is a really encouraging sign for Australia that you know we are really getting on that front foot uh, with blockchain technology but you know, there, there's more to be done. And if we go back to that last article, and you know, there's three trillion dollars in blockchain technology within the next ten years. I mean, if Australia could, you know, just get some of that, that would be great for them. You know, we need to be on the front foot. We need to be leading. We don't need to simply be following. And Australia, as I said, you know, we don't lead in a lot of things. We lead in some. It's not like we don't lead in any. But we really, if we want to build our name and, you know, be one of the superpowers of the world, and we're a long way off that, I know, but we need to get on the front foot and we need to, you know, be really progressive and, you know, just keep up with the latest things that are happening in the world and not simply wait for everyone else to test it out and do it and then we follow uh, later on. But well done, Australia, and good on the Australian Securities Investments Commission for getting into distributed uh, ledger technology system. Now, something else uh, I found. So Bitcoin will replace gold as go-to safe haven, says $10 billion advisory group CEO. I thought this was really uh, interesting because a lot of the CEOs of, you know, uh, you know hedge funds and things like that, they've been, been really apprehensive about cryptocurrencies for a number of years now. You know, it was called rat poison and all sorts of stuff. And now slowly but surely everyone's changing their tune and so this is interesting the founder and ceo of 10 billion dollar advisory firm devere group nigel green has revealed he believes bitcoin will replace gold as the go-to safe haven asset within a generation so that's not that far away speaking to broadcast uh, money fm green shared some of his thoughts on bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies in an interview first spotted by bitcoin.com Green explained why he believes Bitcoin could potentially replace gold as the top safe haven asset. During the interview, the CEO said he thinks Bitcoin has gradually become more accepted. It definitely has. And that when we go back to basics, there's always been a system of payments in the world. Uh, Even if we go back to the bartering, there was always some way of people keeping score. Currently, Green said the governments are keeping score and not everyone is comfortable with that arrangement. A way of looking at cryptocurrency, said, is that a computer is keeping score. Exactly, because fiat money, that is just a promise from the government. They're promising you that you know money's worth this and all the rest of it. But these days, it's not backed by anything. Once upon a time, not anything, but it's, it's not you know backed hard by certain assets. It's very loose. And at the moment, every government's printing more money. And look, I understand that they have to but that means it's devalued even more. The dollars, you know, drop 90-something percent from what it used to be worth, uh, and it's going to go to zero. That's just the way it is. All fiat systems have gone to zero, uh, and the one we have now is going to be no different. So very interesting that, uh, again, I'm, this CEO, I'm guessing he's he's going to be older in life. I'm going to say he's probably 50, if not 60 plus years old and he can even see what's coming now it's not going to happen overnight bitcoin's not just suddenly going to become you know the world currency tomorrow and look may never become the world currency but it is going to be a major factor it's current 
uh, net worth and Bitcoin in total is already more than some countries uh, in their dollars and it's only growing. Adoption will continue to happen. And here's something else that uh, helps sort of, you know, go along with that theory. Micro transactions or small and quick payments with Bitcoin can be made via Lightning Network. Well, they've been talking about this for a while and this is really what it's going to fall down on. You know, if Bitcoin is to be truly become, you know, the world reserve currency, it needs to be a whole lot better than what it is. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still good as a store of value, but you can't send it very fast at times, you know, depending. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. And the fees, a lot like Ethereum, they're astronomical when it gets overloaded. We need to have scaling solutions for Bitcoin. Uh, you know, it's much the same as Ethereum. If Ethereum's, you know, really to kind of take off and scale, uh, and it is slowly but surely doing that, then that's exactly what it needs. It needs Ethereum 2.0 to come out and all those layer two networks and sharding and all the rest of it. And Bitcoin is no different. If Bitcoin is to really succeed and again, possibly become, you know, the world reserve currency, they need the lightning network and some again. The Lightning Network by itself is probably unlikely to be able to do it. You know, you need to be able to send Bitcoin for a fraction of a cent and it needs to be able to be processed, you know, in a matter of sort of seconds. Now, don't get me wrong, Bitcoin can do that, except for when it gets overloaded. When the network gets overloaded, it's anything but fast. It can take half an hour or more uh, and it can cost you quite a lot of money to send it. And it's for those reasons that it will not become the world reserve currency. Until those things are covered, it just can't and won't do it. But hopefully these things are being worked on. Uh, and, you know, again, as that uh, CEO was saying, you know, in a generation's time, he can see cryptocurrencies, well, more so Bitcoin, he was saying, but cryptocurrencies as well. They will be the mainstay that, you know, the the fiat money that we use now, it's going to be gone. But the thing is, you know, there's these digital dollars that they're bringing out. Digital dollars won't last. They are just a digital form of fiat. It's the same thing. They can be sort of, you know, they won't be printed anymore, but they will be made into oblivion. It will go to zero because they just keep increasing the amount when they need to. That doesn't work. You can have a digital dollar that is backed by other things, that's hard backed by things such as Bitcoin, such as gold, you know, such as, you know, whatever else they uh, think is a good hard asset, then you could have a digital dollar that was backed by something and it would be able to work. But if it's just basically a digital form of the fiat system we have now, it will fail as well. And so, you know, digital dollars, you know, they're a step forward but it's still the same thing and it will fail in the long run. Now, last but not least, let's get over and have a look at the market. So here we go, the market is up, back up in that 350 billion. We're up at 352 a while ago, then it went down to I think 347 billion. Now it went up to 350 billion the other day and now we're at $353 billion. Now, as I said, I suspect, we go over and look at the Bitcoin chart, so we've broken out of this, so we'll pull this back here. This has already been made null and void. This is now gone. I'll leave it there for now, but this has broken through. So as we said, I expected we were going to break through this and it was going to be to the upside. I was expecting a bigger move because this was getting really, really tight, but we can still just, I guess, move this across here and then see what happens. Are we going to break out of that? And I suspect we will. And as I said, definitely since sort of, you know, let's say around about here, actually, th this whole move really, if we could get a line, and we'll get the brush, if we pretty much kind of go from across there like that, yes, there's been some dips down below, yes, we've broken up above and come down below, but this is a pretty sort of straight line here. And my honest opinion is that institutional buyers are currently in the market and they are replicating what MicroStrategy has done. They are buying small amounts of Bitcoin every, you know, 
three seconds or you know whatever it was that micro strategy was doing so they are building positions without spiking the price up too high and i actually believe this is going to continue to happen we might have a couple of big spikes and like this and then we'll pull back uh, but i reckon we are going to follow this trajectory for some time and i think that is going to continue to happen until the bitcoin that is currently available on the market starts to severely get reduced and particularly as the uh, miners, you know, who are waiting for sort of better prices, they're going to start to sell off their Bitcoin because there's going to be less and the demand's going to get high. And then we are going to see this rocket. But I do expect us to keep sort of following this trend uh, and for quite some time. Because again, my personal belief is institutional buyers are in the market right now. They know what MicroStrategy did. And again, Grayscale bought 17,000 Bitcoin just in the last seven days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in these last seven days, and it probably wasn't today, and it was probably more these sort of seven days. So we had a big massive spike here. I don't know if that was grayscale making a big buy, but along a lot of these days, they were buying Bitcoin and there wasn't any major spike. So again, I don't think they're just, you know, coming in and say, right here, we want $17,000, uh, 17,000 Bitcoin. I mean, look, that could be part of what happened right there. But we just have this sort of constant trend. And then there's some retail getting in and then there's retail panicking and selling. But I do believe institutional buyers are in here at the moment. And Bitcoin is just going to continue to creep upwards, even if there's no stimulus. You know, we're a little bit green today because we can go over here and have a look. And we can see that we've had some green on the S&P 500. So it's, you know... There's, you know, there's a bit of enthusiasm at the moment that there's going to be some more stimulus packages. And so that's obviously affected Bitcoin as well. Uh, but I think the Bitcoin more is, again, I think institutional buyers are getting in. They're building their positions and they are just buying tiny little bits of Bitcoin every time it sort of dips down to a certain price. And again, at one point it was around that ten thousand dollar mark any time to drop down to around ten thousand one hundred it was just getting snapped up and then it went to ten thousand two hundred ten thousand three hundred now i honestly reckon it's about the ten thousand kind of five hundred ten thousand six hundred dollar range at the moment we can see that's been happening for quite some time here as soon as bitcoin uh got down to so there we go let's say sort of ten thousand six hundred and seventy dollars it just gets bought up straight away. And again, I think we will continue to see that play out. Last but not least, the Dixie. This is also part of it. So there is, uh, you know, a bit of enthusiasm that there's going to be a further stimulus package come out soon. So the dollar is dropping off and people are starting to, you know, put money back into stocks and things like that. And Bitcoin, again, when the Dixie is doing well, so that's the dollar index, Generally, that means people are taking money out of stocks, excuse me, but when the Dixie is not doing well, falling over, generally people are putting the money into things like stocks and we can see that there's been a sell-off after the last few days. A little bit of green here, so we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, I'd love to know what your thoughts are. You know, are you bullish about Australia and their involvement, um, you know, in dis distributed ledger technology, particularly if you're Australian? If you're not, then you probably don't really care. But let me know your thoughts, uh, particularly if there's anyone from Australia. Do you believe Australia should build a position in Bitcoin itself as a hedge against, you know, deflation? Uh, deflationary money and things like that even the Australian dollars you know buying less and less it's been doing it my entire life I can remember what I used to buy you know when I was young you could go and buy a bag of lollies you know for a dollar and they were like one cent two cent lollies these days you'd be paying five ten cents so a very small uh, sort of you know minuscule uh, analogy that's not you know doesn't really say a whole lot but it's just the easiest way for me to think of it you know rents obviously gone up everything's gone up but the easiest one is again that i could buy a bag of lollies 
for a dollar and it'd be a full handful of lollies. I couldn't eat them all. I'd have to share them with my brother and my friends. Uh, these days, a dollar, you know, wouldn't get you bugger all. You know, cans of Coke, all those kind of things are uh, easy ways to think. So again, if you're in Australia, let me know if you're uh, bullish about Australia's, you know, push into uh, DLT. If you think Australia should buy some Bitcoin, build a position, you know, be one of the first governments in the world to come out and publicly announce that they have built a position in Bitcoin. I think, you know, that would be great, uh, you know, for Australia, uh, the economy, you know, to help with our uh, superannuation funds and things like that. Hopefully, hopefully our superannuation funds are already, you know, seeing the writing on the wall and getting involved in cryptocurrencies and particularly Bitcoin and that. But also, do you think uh, Bitcoin has a chance of becoming a world reserve currency? Let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think that it could happen, you know, with the Lightning Network, or do you think more would be needed? You know, I haven't seen enough of the Lightning Network to know its capacity and whether it would be able to sustain world, uh, you know, use. I'm sure, you know, a few thousand, maybe even a couple of hundred thousand people could probably use it, but could billions of people use? Uh, Bitcoin sort of all you know not exactly simultaneously but you know fairly often I'm not sure all right stay safe be kind to one another hopefully you're on that game train today and I'll see you next time